Mr. Marty Stone. Yes, he is. He'll do some shooting from the wing out there. Oh, speaking of. Yes, shooting. just inside the three-point line is Chris Jackson, the 6'1 freshman from Gulfport, Mississippi, coming off a 48-point effort against Louisiana Tech. He thinks it's going to come along late this year. Wayne Sims clears nice. the glass. Blanton at the other end for an easy train. The only senior on the squad and the team captain averages 16 his first two. It's 8-4 LSU and we have a foul before the shot. But look at the one-on-one -on -one ability of 35 Chris Jackson against Jose Ramos and those Florida guards couldn't knock it down. Good shot then of the defense to see how they're playing Shinsis. Look at this. Oh, he is so relaxed. So confident. Chris Jackson came in shooting 50% from three-point range. He went through a few things, tried the different guard combos, and said, look, if we get pressed, let's get it. Look at this. They better get in his face. That's two straight permission. Well, you know, he had that 48. Jackson did against Louisiana Tech. He got off to a slow start against McNeese. They said, keep on shooting. He'll keep laying one up here. Well, and into great. double. Eight minutes into the first half, Florida on top, and the confident shooting of Chris Jackson from out on top. Well, the thing here is the whole court. Chris Jackson already with 10 points. He just simply froze Brian Hogan, and Hogan's a good defensive guard. But you can't just have one guy play him. I mean, I, I think you got to put some pressure on the other people. Great look. End to end action here. Is this confidence? Oh. Oh. Ricky oh. Sims. There must be a lid at that end of the court right now. Chapman a little frustrated. Just saw him shaking his head. A little bump. Hogan moving. of LSU have been awesome on the road here tonight. 39-17. Jiving. Chris Jackson blocked, but before that he was fouled. It looks like Clifford Lett got him as he flashed by. I can't believe his great first, second, and third step. Been outstanding tonight, and Chris Jackson at the line. This is one of the great freshmen in the country, of course. Everybody who follows basketball, Blanton has been some defensive rebound after a few tips by his teammates. But Jackson just gives it up regardless of who. Look at this. There's a 360, a double, triple pump, and he misses, but he's fouled by Jose Ramos. And now he's telling his teammates where to go, where they should have been. I mean, this is the poise of a junior or a senior, but the ability to spin out of trouble, to read ahead. Look at this. Oh. That's extraordinary. Now, that's not a walk either. He put the ball on the floor before he picked up the pivot. He's in tickets since he showed up because yeah. they know his son. Harold Boudreau. Point play for the Gators. Under five minutes, first half. It's still a 21-point spread. Oh, a little dipsy do. Oh, fade back. Baby, Dick Barnett. I'm really thrilled to get a chance to see him this early in his career. Take a look at the man they'll be calling CJ for a long time. This, this is a little dance. I don't think you have these moves on the floor, but just banging him from deep. What confidence and right into the press. Jackson bouncing rebound. Great look. Now you say, well, maybe you should have held on. Nice back door. Chris Jackson way up into the air. He has 24. And LSU gets it back with some tough defense on the inbounds play. Clifford Lett, let me tell you, the alley -oop for forwards and centers normally, Krzyzewski clears out for a home. CJ! They continue it now. They got the building on their side all of a sudden. Florida over the long run is on a 28 to 13 run after that move by Chris Jackson. They used the rim so that the big guy, seven foot two, would only hurt the pinky. Let me tell you, they needed a basket here, LSU. A freshman takes over. If he takes the layup on this side, it's out of here. Damn. You see the little tuck with the arm? Heads up play. Three point game with 10 minutes remaining. Wow. Should count for four. Oh, that's that's like a senior. He's been quiet, but that could be the one that lifts. 
Jackson for Sim. So we're trading back. Huh? Oh, my goodness, again. Isn't that amazing? This Jackson has 32. That's two threes, tough, deep. Versus the long jumper here. This is going to be left. This kid with another year's experience. Oh my. Eight points at the tough time of the game. Two three pointers, two free throws. He has 34. 14 second half points for Schitz. is 22 in the game. Norm's long just shook his head, say, Why did a nice play by the. Now he passes. Usually you see a senior working on a freshman. After a time, he'll eventually get him out of there. Here's a freshman who erases a senior final. Well, those kind of moves you learn in the NBA. I mean, he's doing them now as a freshman. You're right. About defense against this guy. There's the three. Oh. Kokomo, Indiana. They can all shoot Indiana. Two-point game, 8-10 remaining. Hogan spelling let off the bench with a huge basket. That's not a good one. Go ahead. Tell me it's not good. That's why I'm out of it. 38 for Chris Jackson. I'm out there. Good for him, right? Uh, he just can't, can't move. He is so tough with the dribble. I don't care who you are. The foot speed. This kid is so good with the dribble. You know, Hogan came into this ball game relatively late. Jackson might get him fouled out, too. He That's three foul. on him. He could foul anybody out. Dale Brown into the pro set right now. I'm thinking a tiny he wants extraordinary ability. I know it turned out well, but he's got good footwork. And, of course, the great touch. Oh, oh man. Oh, would you give me a break? That's 42. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne Sims clears the board after that short one. We talked about lead defensively. Chapman's done a great job on Grant. Look at this kid. And Look at the roll. Oh, my. He is absolutely one of the premier point guards already. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, gee, you don't have to talk about class this anymore. This is the fifth game of the guy's career. Oh, would I go back to coach if I had somebody like him? Look at the crossover between the legs. Now the hesitation. Get him up. Deliver. And score the goal. He just fouled out Ronaldo Garcia. Garcia with five points. Garcia saying, I ain't seen anybody like this in Tampa. Not, not in high school. No. Jackson is under four minutes left. Uh, we can watch this from any camera. It's always going to spell the same thing. Scintillating performance. 47. Hogan for three, short, Blanton, Chins has knocked it away from him. Mouton will give it back to Mr. Jackson. Chris Jackson with 47 on the night. The previous high in this building, 43 by Charles Bradley of Florida State. Hogan tried to draw it, all of a sudden 12. Dwayne Chins is in his three ball games this year, 22, 18, and now 25. See, now Dale's trying to get him to slow down. Wow, what an assist that was. Sims from Jackson. Played by one man. The big 5-0. Well, he did it. 51. And here in the middle of December. Is that your sound game at the Superdome? Cut fast there by Hogan. Uh oh, here it comes. There's the new record against Florida. Jackson has 53. But Pistol Pete has to be smiling down on what's uh, happening here tonight. Uh, tough, tough. Blanton Shipson. takes it away. The game is over. And LSU on the road wins it 111 to 101. We're gasping at what we saw from Chris Jackson tonight. 53 points. Number 300 in his fine career for Dale Brown in his 17th year at LSU. And tonight, C.J. brings his road show to Lexington, Kentucky to take on the mighty Wildcats here in Rupp Arena. And there you see the starting lineup. Jackson and Sean Sutton, Lyle Mouton, Derek Miller, Blanton and Chris Mills, Wayne Sims and Reggie Hansen, Singleton, Burnell Singleton, the center at only 6'6", and Leron Ellis.
Timmy, very quickly, LSU obviously want to take it, wants to take advantage of their quickness and their speed. Kentucky will want a very slow tempo. Actually signed in the fall. Chris Jackson gets his Three first two for the game and mark it down. Nine minutes. Sims loses it to Jackson, and this is the first opportunity in the open court we've had for CJ. Oh, what a great move. Lays it up over his back, over his right shoulder, off of the glass. And watch CJ, Chris Jackson, with his first basket of the game. Was well, that a good offensive move right there? A little flip over the so shoulder and a roll off the glass. Four seconds for LSU to launch one. And that's how much time we have remaining in the half. Jackson runs the baseline. Boy, did he have the afterburners on. He exploded by Laron Ellis that time. He was trying to Seems to have Jackson really snap through. Chris Mills is a pretty quick 6'7". That time he wasn't so quick. Picked up the block. And Mills with 11 points and 8 boards. Mills lets Jackson get free. And Chris Jackson with just his fourth field goal of the game. Chris Jackson. That's his spot. And he finally pumps it for three. You see his rhythm that time. He had the rhythm. A little bit of a bounce. He felt better about it. Didn't shoot it short. And penetrates. Boy, now he just, you see, the speed factor. He just turned it up a couple of notches that time. Tim, I read a great quote. Eddie Sutton wanted a foul against Wayne Sims, and he didn't get it. LSU could cut it to three. Jackson does it. A little dribble between the legs. Brown wants a timeout. Chris Jackson feels it. The Tigers are within three with 4 12 left. Kentucky bench. And Tim, what makes it so costly is the ball had already been converted back to Kentucky. Now they not only lose the basketball and they give LSU two free throws. This could be a six point play for LSU. These earlier against Nebraska, down 86 80, a six point play in one second ticked off the clock. They came back to win it in the last minute 30, 90 to 87. Well, Four points down, and Sutton realizes that this could be a real turning point. This is crunch time. Sutton bashes Jackson, connects for three. A seven-point trip. And LSU leads by a deuce. Look out. Clock down to 22. Miller. Blanton. Chris Jackson is on the move. A two-on-two -two break. Oh, is he special? You wonder why this young man's the number two scorer in the nation? Watch this offensive play right here. Watch Derek Miller try to keep up with Chris Jackson. Goes right by him, bumps him right there early, comes back and gets him again, and Jackson still makes it over. Chris Jackson, six first half points, 16 in the second half, and it's beginning to make difference. You know, he was 3 of 11 in the first half. He is 6 of 12 in the second half. Not a vintage night. You know, you could say he has a bad night, and he has 27, 28 points. And he's only a freshman. How many times would you say that? Better with a little bump. Jackson, ball on the outside, that left hand protected, shielded away from that defender. You see the Miller put the body on him right there? The push occurred before the shot. Makes no difference. They're going to shoot one and one anyway. Fourth foul on Derek Miller, whose offense has really picked up in the second half. So has that man. Jackson with 23. He had only six at the intermission. He's shooting into quite a Kentucky crowd. Didn't bother him at all. Hey, when you're shooting 81%, you don't worry about it. He's already been an ESPN Sports Person of the Week. He only played uh, four SEC. <laughs> on the bench that really gave LSU its first lead. And that's exactly right. Ellis has got to make both of these. Oh, well, come on, I got to go. Dress, dress.
got the shot clock off. They can take the last one. Dale wants the timeout. 62 62. Democracy. Do you want this? Yeah. Yes. That's the one we want to run, coach. When he said, when he said you want to run the Jackson's got it now. Crowd will help tell the story. Jackson soloing. Getting the foul. And six seconds left to play. I want to get fouled. Or I want the last shot. Last timeout, just moments ago, he has one remaining. Eddie Sutton also has one remaining. <laughs> yeah. Four court man to man pressure after the main free throw. That's what the hand over the fist signifies that Brown just gave his team. Oh, and he drew some iron as well. Ricky! Always be a catalyst down the stretch for the opposition with those kinds of numbers. Jackson All gives right. LSU a lead by two. Here it goes. Mills. Good defensive pressure. Tracy with the steal. And Dale Brown, the master motivator, steals one. I'm not going to put him in the class of Charles Barkley, but he reminds you a little bit about Barkley with that bulk, how quickly he can get to the ball. Four fouls on morning. Singleton returns after getting that ankle tape. And Tillman checks in for the Hoyas. Shooting one and one. Number Billy, what's the foul situation? Well, there it is. Well, Tracy, who has done an incredible job. Singleton Sims, who's played the entire second half with three. And Jackson, who did not pick up another one. On the other side, John is so deep with talent, it really doesn't hurt him. Long. Singleton winds up with it, comes back and goes down hard again. But possession of the ball would have been more important than putting that up. Singleton really limping. John is going to spread things out. Remember, Tracy has four fouls on him, but he's going to have to just go and keep playing Smith tight. Jackson. Jammed in by Alonzo Mourning. Seven of his nine points. We'll make it eight of his nine here in the second half. Three-point shot. They've got to get Jackson the ball somehow. Field goal, and there's a foul underneath. Basket's got to count. I'm wondering if it's against Jackson hitting Jaron Jackson. Fouls on number 24. And when we conclude this basketball game, we'll send you out for third round coverage of the AT&T Pebble Beach National Pro-Am. Leaderboard starting to back up in that tournament. It's way tie right now. Brett, that was on Singleton. That's his fifth. That may be a blessing for uh, Dale Brown, though, because he comes back with Mouton. It gives him the three guards, and he needs some outside threats. Solid game for a freshman who's going to have a fine career at LSU. Excellent defender, leaps well. Sims pulls down the missed free throw. As you can tie at this trip. That's the time remaining. Jackson. Oh, oh, and put him shot. on the line. The kid is special. Bryant is a great defender. And watch what Jackson does to him. He gets him on his hip and glides it right on through. And no emotion. When you watch him shoot around in practice, that unlimited range and that great wrist snap of his, even though he was getting bodied, he still had the ability to keep that ball in control with his wrist. Shooting one to the 35, Chris Jackson. And a kid 
puts him ahead. 78-77, 207 remaining. And now with a pretty good matchup, Blanton playing Alonzo Mourning, doing an incredible job on him today, and they've got guards against guards. So Jaron Jackson with 26 points steps up to the free throw line and the Hoyas trailing by one at the 145 mark. Fred, this is a tough defense and a tough offense to handle because you have Alonzo Morning setting these screens and four guards that can handle the ball so well coming off the Jackson. More tickets sold for this college basketball game than any in history. 66,000 plus. And they've enjoyed a good one. Jackson missed that one. Knocked back into the hands of Smith. That was Bobby Winston. This fellow right here, excellent team field general. Good passer. Hard to double team him because of his size. Going to straight four corners now. Change again. And some great memories here in the Superdome in terms of college basketball. Keith Smart of Indiana. Michael Jordan of North Carolina. Championship games that have unfolded here this decade. The place, Dome. place has been great to CBS. Smith. Won't go down. He hustles after it in the corner and gets it away from Sims at the one-minute mark. Each coach down to his last timeout. Got a 15-second differential, clock and shot clock, so LSU will get the ball back at least once. Straight four corners. Smith is their clutch shooter. Jackson's been the hot hand today, and Mouton fouled him. You know, Brent, here's a case where I think a team that goes four corners on you, instead of getting spread out man-to-man, -man, pull everything back. If you're not going to go press them, pull everything back to the foul line so they can't get that breakaway on you. And let the clock work in your favor as opposed to it being your enemy. Singleton's ankle must really be bothering him because as he fouled out and the other fellas over there on the bench can't come in. So with Singleton out with fouls, it's such a small lineup doesn't matter anyway as Jackson hit the free throw. It has been a great homecoming for this man. There's Dale Brown with Coach Abernathy. He's been with him for 14 years. Oh, I think he's done. But Morning comes back, flatten off with it. And with 34 seconds to go, the foul against the Hoyas. And Ricky Blanton will come up to the other end. Now there's one of those freshman mistakes. Alonzo grabs the rebound. All they want is possession of the ball. They had the one-point lead. He tried a scoop shot that just wasn't in the cards. The senior leader, Ricky Blanton, comes to the free throw line, shooting one and one, and the Tigers down to the Hoyas by a point. Well, they came back and beat Georgia, and Blanton didn't even take a shot in the second half. Brown's going to stay in man-to-man. -man. LSU leads by a point. 34 seconds to go. Shot clock off. John has that one timeout. Now he wants it. Now Thompson will use his last timeout. Looking at Charles Smith, he's going to be a big player when you come back. Want to take better pictures? Get the new Canon EOS 750, the only autofocus SLR with a flash like this and a system with computers and motors in every lens. Here, try it. Try the zoom. Easy, right? Well, that's EOS. You like it. Can I get it back now?
New Canon EOS 750. Photography, pure and simple. <laughs> To be successful in delivering packages to Europe, Canada, and the Far East, it takes a lot more than fast trucks. It takes a knowledgeable worldwide staff, a computerized tracking system, and of course, a fleet of planes that fly there. Insist on all four. Worldwide service from Federal Express. Nothing's rougher on a man's face than shaving. That's why there's Skin Bracer. It's more than an aftershave. It soothes, cools, tightens pores, so it's good for your skin. Thanks. I needed that. Skin Bracer aftershave. By Maven. Testing. When my head really hurts, I don't care what anyone says. The only thing that counts is what works for me. Advil does. One's usually enough. 24 seconds to go. Georgetown's ball. And just a moment ago, Dale Brown talking to his team. Ricky, you gotta show the penalty. You gotta step out. Hey, don't let them get a second shot. All right? Because they're gonna shoot to try to win it. We get the ball, we go home. Unless we can intercept it, huh? I got a feeling we might intercept it. Hey, help each other. If they score, don't want a timeout. Norman Vincent Peale never ran a huddle any better. The power of positive thinking. I think we're gonna intercept it. Here comes the main man. Smith is up with his shot. He was fouled by Tracy. By uh, Charles Smith really caught at a tough angle there, and Dale Brown told his club that it would be Smith or Jackson that would take the shot. Charles Smith's going to come up off the floor and shoot these fouls, believe me. He is tough as nails. He felt a little contact and then went to the floor. That's all for Tracy, isn't it, Brent? I think that's his fifth. Yeah, you're right, Billy. It is. You, you see, he caught him right there. Smitty, look at the concentration on Smitty. On the way down, his head's still watching the flight of the ball. So Tracy will leave the game, and Russell Grant getting ready to check in for the first time. LSU does have a timeout remaining. Number 22, Russell Grant. He's going to use it to try to ice Charles Smith. Now, I don't know. I think I'd have let him on the line because he's injured a little bit. Make him shoot it right away. He scored 31 points here this afternoon, and he's 6 of 7 from the free throw line. I would guess that the one player you really have a tough time icing is Charles Smith. He sure. is Mr. Cool, and we'll be back to see him at the line in a moment. Listen to me. Doesn't get the roll. Needs the second one to tie it for Thompson. We're tied at 80, 20 seconds to go. LSU's ball, they'll try to get it into Chris Jackson's hands. Mouton gets it over to the freshman sensation, and here he comes against Smith. He's going to be triple team him. Somebody's open underneath. He keeps the dribble. He's looking for a foul, doesn't get it. The shot short up to Blend. <laughs>
three-point men. A check of the amount of $1,000 is donated to each school's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in their chosen field of endeavor. Well, that wraps it up for James Brown and Billy Packer. I'm Brent Musburger. So long for the Dome of New Orleans. The final score, LSU upsets Georgetown 82-80. to This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the NCAA championship. have a tough time tonight as debris have already showered the floor. Mills, Hanson, Ellis, Sutton, and Miller begin for Kentucky. LSU counters with Sims, Blanton, Singleton, Mouton, and Jackson. And again, Ellis and Mills playing despite having the flu. Ready to go from Baton Rouge. LSU controls the time. Opening minute of the game from Baton Rouge. Kentucky up by a pair. Jackson for three. Got it. One on two, Chris Jackson, no contest. Well, from New Orleans, a uh, walk-on has been a valuable member of this Tiger team. Now, you can watch Tracy. And he made the basket, so costly call. There's a three-pointer from Chris Jackson. And he has broken a tie and scored the last seven points. Jackson, that was a two or three. Jackson said three, the officials said... Jackson for three, good! He forced that shot, but Ellis was in great position for that offensive tap. Jackson got away, dipped it inside to Sims, who hits. Now that's one of the best... ...returns for Kentucky, Mills goes to the bench. Chris Jackson now has... 17 points in the first half. Now, you let a player like Jackson get really warmed up and, and into his game, and uh, we could have one of those 50 point nights. Singleton replaces Blanton. Here's the bad news if you're a Kentucky fan LSU has an 11 point lead. Miller's three. Short. Blanton with a rebound. Blanton has their right hand pretty heavily wrapped there. That may have something to do with his shooting production. Mouton on the breakout. Trailer Jackson is fouled. If this were the NBA, the continuation would count the basket. I don't... Yes, well, it will. Oh. As usual, the Kentucky coaches don't like it. <laughs> and as you said, Tom, it was a, in, that was an NBA call right there. There's the foul. There's no way that basket counts. Well, when you're a superstar, you get the calls. Except when I had superstars. <laughs> Jackson completes the three-point play. Jackson had the presence of mind to get rid of it before he ate it. It didn't take much thought to do that. He was sworn. And then he drives baseline, takes Hanson to school, and lays it in. Jackson goes the other way. Mills trying to get back. Jackson reverses the ball and lays it in. Pretty play, Chris Jackson. This one was like the film that we ran earlier, the tape we ran earlier when he went in, laid up the reverse layup. The shot, Mills fights with Blanton, and LSU has it. Jackson laid it in. LSU's got a long way to go. Chris Jackson, again, uses that quickness to get out on the break. Shooting hand, that'll really bother you. Sutton threw it away. Jackson gets control and lays it through. Another bad pass by Kentucky. The Wildcats falling apart here. Great pass, Jackson to Blanton. He's flying back. Watch his pass. Look at, look at this. He puts his whole body in that pass. He skipped it right under Fellhouse's nose to Blanton. Tigers could take their biggest lead of the game here. Jackson tries to give it to them. He does. 31 for Chris Jackson. The defensive man on the screener has to step out of lane. Couldn't handle it. Mouton with quick hands. Goes the other way. Jackson, Blanton, two. Ricky Blanton hits double six.
break real well. Here's, here's Jackson making the pass. He looked one way and catches Blanton coming right down the middle. Now picking that. 80% of those rebounds come off. Jackson had a hand on Sutton's shot, then dishes to Blanton for another assist. And the Blanton Jackson show yeah. is underway. And these Watch fans are enjoying it. Let's watch these two at work. Beautiful again. play right here. Jackson makes the defense commit and then kicks off. If he'd thrown it any earlier, Mills could have got over and put pressure on, but he took it right into him before making the pass. The play. LSU's lead, 83-68. Now they're guarding Jackson, one in front and one behind. <laughs> There's he, the shooter's touch. He banks that one off the rim. He's 4-6. Well, Tom, that's not all bad. <laughs> now, especially... Gentlemen, welcome once again to Memorial Gymnasium here on the campus of Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, for today's Southeastern Conference basketball action between the Tigers from LSU and your Vanderbilt Commodores. Here now the starting lineup for today's game. First for our guest from LSU. Starting tonight at guard, a 6'4", 215-pound sophomore from Lafayette, Louisiana. Number 21, Lyle Mouton. At guard, a 6'1", 170-pound freshman from Gulfport, Mississippi. Number 35, Chris Jackson. At forward for the Tigers, a 6'7", 213-pound senior from Miami, Florida. Number 33, Ricky Blanton. At forward is 243-pound sophomore from Derrida, Louisiana. Number 44, Wayne Sims. And starting tonight at center for LSU, a 6'6", 202-pound freshman from Natchez, Mississippi. Number 24, Vernell Singleton. And the head coach of the LSU Tigers, Dale Brown. Here now the starting lineups for your Vanderbilt Commodores. Starting at guard, a 6'4", 190-pound Stand up, show your goal for number four, Barry Booker. At guard for the Commodores, a 6'3", 185-pound senior from Calvert City, Kentucky, number 12. from Louisville, Kentucky, number three, Derek Wilcox. At forward, a 6'8", 220-pound junior from Macon, Georgia, number 52, Eric Reed. And starting at center, a 6'9", 225-pound senior from Lexington, Kentucky, number 34, Southeastern Conference coaches, C. M. Newton. Very unique building, and bench coaching will be difficult for Dale Brown and staff. And Andre Patillo. LSU in gold. Vanderbilt in their home white, trimmed in gold. Most people believe this will be a high-scoring affair. I think you're right. Side of them. One of the well thought of assistants in the country. 14 years he's been with him. Yeah. Jackson puts it in. You know, when you think of it, you can pressure LSU as long as you don't let the have the basketball. Jackson. Great pull up. Oh. Quick to the stop and then bang. Remember, one of them. How many times, though, would you say that about a freshman, Chris Jackson? He has a bad game, scores 28 points. <laughs> and sell them. One of the great. To me, your kind of moves, quick stepping, particularly at check time. Look at him set his man up. You mentioned this is the play they ran to beat Vandy at the end of the game, the jumper. He really uses his sets. He's good without the basketball, bangs that one, and now the ability to stop quickly. Defensively, it's so hard because your momentum goes away. You see the momentum, Wilcox coming to the elbow, and he's able to tee it up. 
extraordinary foot speed and one of the great dribblers I've seen as freshmen. From the floor, LSU 57%, Vandy 60. Well, the bomb squads for both, the ones from Baton Rouge. You anticipate the great ones do anyhow. The guy flailing away, he just pushed it out far enough. And Jackson goes to the line. On the cover of Sports Illustrated this week, an outstanding story written by Curry Kirkpatrick on young Chris. Look at those numbers, by the way. And this is a youngster that is as humble as he is good. Dale told us a lot of great stories about him today. One, he lost his cross. Mm -hmm. And the chaplain... As Steve Grant clears some people out. They'll go deep on the pine, and remember, they have more big people, more fouls to give. Vanderbilt down low. Jackson, the sweet pass to Sims. Once again, he gets pretty deep. Goheen to Wilcox, oh. stolen by Jackson. This is his game, right where he wants to be. Oh, oh. he saw Blanton's lane. Some pretty good outside shooting has stopped the break. Now here's one. Jackson with a three on two solo job. <laughs> oh, he just glides and then puts it in overdrive. LSU hoping to tie on this possession. And there's Jackson wide open. Oh, you know, he doesn't have to work really. He just has a feel. He's not reacting at all to the loose balls. 35 28, the Vandy lead back to seven. And Jackson counters for a trade. The home run. And that was a stack. And of course, Cornette on the bench really helps Vandy prepare for the second half. And Jackson just <laughs> comes right back and buries one. You know what he's going to do, and you can't stop it because he gets to play with those great recruits sitting out. Here, the penetration. And they don't come up with a goal here, but he just punishes the defense. And then he comes back, never says die, as the cliche goes, and gets it done on the defensive end. Now watch the head, Tim. Looking around, making sure Blanton's path was taken away. He didn't want to turn the ball over. And, uh, oh, by the way, the double pump in midair. We sort of forget that. He's <laughs> That's so just an good. extra. Yeah. And from a statistical standpoint, it's impressive. So is Eric Reed. And Jackson at the line with 19 points. Come out of the gate score. I think with better players by that next year, some of those kids sitting out. Down under. Frank Cornett should be an all SEC pivot player in a year that they don't have a big win in this league. Those and there's pits. Jackson coming right back in your face. Enable Goheed to finish it. 16 for Barry, and they're on their feet in Nashville. Great defense. Jackson. Oh, oh, a kiss off balance. Little stack set and a clear out. And that move between uh, the legs always means he's about to go uptown. It does, and, and he usually freezes the defender. Good defense. I'll tell you, Wilcox has work. Jackson for three. See, now this is almost like an NBA confrontation, the two guards. I usually like the offense on my side right. in the first half because we were <laughs> self a, a favorite. I wanted to be in the game at the half. And Jackson has cut this lead in half. He has 33 points. It was time for Chris Jackson with LSU. It's always time for him. <laughs> right here, a couple of moves. This is the freezer move because he puts you in the freezer, closes the door, and then bangs it home. This is another one. He's just going for the paper right here. Decides to shoot it. Pull up very quick to the spot. Turn and square. He doesn't have to be all the way around to make it. A delight to watch. Action. Not to guard. Yeah, action with a capital A. And he is graded A so far tonight. Booker with 17 points. And CM Newton's guards have combined in an effort to stay right with Jackson. Blanton keeps it alive, and Jackson fires again. Great rotation on his ball, doesn't he? Sets it up. Fluid motion. Have been utilized by LSU. 11 for Vanderbilt. Remember that down the stretch. Jackson for oh. three. Oh. He's always there with an answer. Yeah. Amazing. Sophomore from Pasadena, the first Vegas athlete to compete in the Olympics in any sport on the bronze medal basketball team and now Blanton backs up field goals to keep the Tigers a very 
underrated ball player in this no, club Vegas in every respect. Vegas doesn't shoot well, Billy. The coach points that out, and they haven't shot well here today. Sims coming away off the glass. And LSU pulls back to within one. Well, it has been there. Nobody put a body on it. It's that quick crossover dribble that Jackson uses. Getting in closer, and he hits his first field goal. Over the fact his club cannot throw it in the ocean for the foul line. Another good solid screen. Jackson is on the money and here comes the line. Wojcicki with an excellent solid screen that time, and people have to start doing some talking because Jackson lead him alive on that play. Let me follow up on your free throw uh, story regarding. I'll get to that in just a second here, Billy. Watch the solid screen. Nobody switches out. Jones doesn't get there in time. And what makes Jackson so tough, he has unlimited range. He can pull up and take the jumper, and if you jump out at him on the jump switch, he'll go right on by. Now watch this free throw form. This is beautiful. It sure is. You wonder how he ever misses one. Well, we're going to take a TV timeout. We come back. We've got a one. An awkward-looking shot, wasn't it? Jackson brings it back down for the Tigers. It's inside. There's the jump shot. A leader. But this penetration is against the 2 3 matchup zone playing against Anthony, who is a fine defender, and he just hits the leaner with that soft touch and great concentration. He's in three again, but picking up the slack here. Anthony shot. throws up a miss. Jackson coming down, weaving his oh. way. You know what he's so dangerous? We're going to see what I was talking about. Anthony realizes he has Jackson, but watch Jackson. He follows, in effect, the blockers. Young had his back turned right there, and you cannot afford to do that. Sims is a little tired out there having to move that big body up and down the court. Jackson spins, ties it. Nervous condition, which he treats with a drug. You might recall the great Elgin Baylor. He also suffered from Tourette's syndrome. Remember that little nervous tick he had when he approached the basket? Jackson, he is right on target for his 28. He had 14 in the first half. Billy? Well, Brent, I've always wanted to be John Madden. Here's following your blockers. Now, look at the defense. Now, what happens here? This guy gets boomed out. They go down, they get boomed out. And here comes that weaving play of Jackson following his blockers, just like a great running back on a kickoff. Here he comes. Now he sees his opening. Sorry, fellas, I'm going in here for a shot. Well played. This could be a big turnaround here. Two plus the technical and the ball out of bounds. LSU needed something because Vegas had seized command of this game, but we started the second half. We could wait all day if this guy gets in the rhythm on that foul line. <laughs> what did he hit in uh, high two, school? What, 280 one yep. time consecutive free throws when he was at Dolby Ogman. And the running revs have taken control of this one. Their biggest lead of the game. It does not count. Whistle blew earlier. And what Jackson did there, Brennan, said, I'm not touching the ball in the offense, so he just took it off the dribble, went by Anthony, and through the zone. Some maneuver here. We're watching him in practice yesterday against Singleton. He practices getting that ball up against guys that are shot blocked. Still no solid screens for Jackson. sign of pain on his face that time. That's the first time here today that I've seen any indication of a problem. The ball gets tipped on the shot, so therefore he has the right to go get it back again. He slides on in the inside. He may have hurt his ankle yeah, a little bit. That's exactly what he did. Yep. He retwisted it. That's why there was some pain on his face. Watch this right now when he comes down. Yep. Right there. Right there, yeah. Matter of fact, uh, that could have been a severe ankle injury. You know, step on somebody else's shoe. He scored 19 points, make it 20. He had 14, and he is limping. Now Anthony moves back on Jackson. Jackson, three. Now there was a solid stream by Blanton that got Jackson. Why? Pull up. Miss Byron winds up with Blanton, and it's an easy two for Jackson. Stacy Augman has played a very, very good game today with the exception of that decision.
Jackson on the weave gets free inside. 30 seconds to go. Jackson, the main man. Anthony watching him. Here's the three. No, it's a two. It's only a two, they call it. It's a one-point Vegas lead at 20 seconds. LSU has to foul now, and they jump out on Anthony. Mouton will foul him and put him on the line with 14 seconds to go. How many close threes have we had? Gil now, Dale Brown asking for the three. Let's see this one. Boy, he was right on that line when he, when he left the floor. He was behind the line. Now, let me point something out here. He was behind the line when he came down, but he was on the line when he went up, and that's where it counts. Two or four from the free throw line. He has missed both of his free throws this half. Las Vegas up by one, 14 seconds to go. Anthony does a smart thing. He was on the line, set to shoot. The officials did not hand him the ball. He backed off to get himself a nice, comfortable motion. He's shooting the front end. Big one. Now he can put the three-point pressure on Mr. Jackson again. Two. They get it to Jackson, and he oh, saves it with 10 seconds to go now. They'll have to hurry. It'll be Blend with a three. He's got it. Three seconds to go. Vegas throws up a shot. No good. LSU wins it. the result. There's a three-pointer from Mouton. Four lead. LSU has hit only two of its first 11 shots, 18%. The Gators are over 60%. There's a foul. That basket by Chris Jackson will not count. Instead, it'll be a Florida foul. Well, I think that's a key right now is Jackson's play. He's had a lot of, had a couple of turnovers, and he's missed a few shots. But boy, I tell you, can he get by you on that first step? Garcia with his first foul. Chris Jackson with a three-pointer, his first basket of the game. I'll tell you, Tom, this situation's dunk record here tonight. Eight points for David. Oh, what a move. That one by Jackson is also a two. What a move by Jackson. Good teamwork. Best teamwork I've seen him use all year. At the midway point of the half, Florida by 11. Mouton for three. And here come the Tigers trying to cut into an eight-point lead. Sims. Reclaim a ten-point lead. Good fast break by Florida. They fill those lanes. Jackson for three. Yes. I tell you, he's explosive. Is he ever game? But Florida's certainly not shy away from. Oh my God. Blanton with a lob pass to Jackson for the slam. After a timeout, you can expect this. They just clear that side for Jackson. And he gets that step on the defensive foul. And he's Jackson. still shaking his head. Jackson missed two at the line a while ago, hitting 83%. Tops in the conference. That's his 10th point of the game. Mark Sloan gives one of those eyebrow stares where he ducks his head and looks at that referee. Who's your hot son? Blanton to Jackson, nothing there. Blanton, three-point attempt. Ricky Blanton starting to get on track. Now we're getting, we got some help that time. Grant came in and got that ball loose. Foul on Hogan as Jackson sinks it with a pretty move. Right here, Grant shakes it loose, and here's the fast break, and Hogan says, Coach, I didn't touch him. 
He looks over to the bench and says, I didn't touch him. Let's look at it. I don't, I don't see the foul. I don't believe he did touch him. LSU 54% nearly to 38% for the Tigers. Blanton's going to have to get into the offense. Jackson oh. dished it off, got it back, and scored. What a reaction to this. He got his shot blocked, let it go to the floor, and just picked it up and scored. There's a foul committed by Tracy of LSU. Tracy, a defensive specialist, he comes in and makes things happen with these defense. Here, Jackson, he gets the shot blocked right there. Let it go to the floor. Now, that takes some presence of mind to do that. The 39 Florida points. You got to block that shooter out, Tom. Keep him away from that board. Jackson, with that great quickness, rolls it through. All right, there's definitely something to pressure in that defense. Here, Jackson going in. Really great concentration. He just ducks his head. Gives it up. Jackson drives baseline. Dips it to Sims. He got it. Chapman jumped out and gave the good help. But why not just stay with him, make him pass that ball out of the trap? Try to work on him and, uh, and get him a little uptight. A sense you would seem to be an All-American in his first season of college basketball. And after struggling early at the free throw line, that shot looked good. Back in his Gulfport High School days, they used to start practice by shooting free throws. You had to, everybody had to make 20 in a row before practice could begin. And if you kept hitting at 20, you kept going to your missed. He once hit 283 in a row. They burn out a few light bulbs trying to get him to, to miss one. Davis was out of his range, Tom. He, he's got to be close that back. Look at this move. Jackson wins LSU at first lead. Watch out. Chris Jackson now on fire, and LSU goes up by three. LSU's on the run here. He doesn't care how many people are down for it. Blanton will put it up, and he'll hit. Ten to two, Tiger run. They'll hold it for the last shot. Jackson has hit eight of his last nine shots. There's a three. Oh! Hey, how about this move right here? He really has trouble getting the ball. But look what he does with it after he gets it. How he gets this shot off, I don't know. But look where it goes. And he's zeroed in right now. And it works as Sims rebounds the miss. Jackson, no look pass. Clinton laid it in. Hostile crowd of over 14,000. Bad pass. Garcia made a bad pass, and Jackson will cruise in. straight game he's hit double figures here's a pass by Chris Jackson well that was last time down that's what I like to see Chris do I think the comfort zone is right under that basket Davis has all four second half Gator points Jackson over the outstretched arm of seven two times down the floor Chapman missed that layup Jackson over Garcia yes Oh, Jackson just, he's so calm. He comes down the floor like. Jackson off a pick, three-pointer, yes. Oh, that's, that's where I would trap him. Got that roller with the zone hill. Sims rebounds the Chapman miss. Blanton in against Garcia, scores. the tap and Blanton clears the rebound. Jackson. Gators close within one at the midway point of the second half. A win by Florida gives the Gators no worse than a tie for the title. Oh, what a move. What a move. Jackson to Sims. Sims can't score. Singleton has it. The outlet to Jackson. Blanton. Mm -hmm. 
Jackson's in his move right here. One for his last eight. Try it again. Finally get one. Chris Jackson, that's a three-point attempt. 42 points for Jackson. I call that hurry up offense. <laughs> two of the most exciting players in the country and definitely in the Southeastern Conference. We call them the top guns. They're two of the top four scorers in the country. For Ole Miss, of course, it's Gerald Glass, second in the SEC, fourth in the country. And, of course, for the Tigers, Chris Jackson, number two in the nation and the top scorer in the Southeastern Conference. Uh, it's such a shame that Glass came into the conference the same year C.J. did because he really hasn't gotten the publicity that he deserves. He leads the team in three-point shooting, in scoring, in rebounding. And then with C.J., well... If he scores 15 points tonight, he'll become the all-time leading scorer among freshmen in college basketball. And, you know, C.J. might score... At one forward, a six-foot-seven senior from Miami, Florida, number 33, Ricky Blanton. Also a six-foot-seven sophomore from Derrida, Louisiana, number 44, Wayne Sims. At center, a six-foot-six-inch freshman from Natchez, Mississippi, number 24, Vernell Singleton. At one guard, the six foot four sophomore from Lafayette, Louisiana, number 21, Lyle Luton. Also at guard, the six foot one freshman from Gulf Fork, Mississippi, number 35, Chris Jackson. Head coach of the Tigers is Dale Brown. Now for the starters of the Old Miss Rebels. At guard, a five foot ten inch sophomore from Memphis, Tennessee, number 10, John Matthews. Also at guard, a six foot three inch Mississippi, number 22, Tim Jumper. Starting at center, a 6'11 inch sophomore from Oxford, Mississippi, number 21, Sean Murphy. And one forward, a 6'5 inch sophomore from Memphis, Tennessee, number 31, Greg Turner. And also at forward, a 6'6 inch junior from Greenwood, Mississippi, number 4, Look at the matchups for the teams. Uh, well, we'll get to that in a little bit. First, the tip, and we're underway for Oxford Ole Miss controlling out front. John Matthews moves the jumper. They're looking to glass early. His first shot of the game. Now, the scary thing about that, Steve, is the next time down, he might go right inside for the layup. He can do it both. Average is 27. Here's Jackson the other way. Almost had it stripped. Mouton gets it back to Chris. Game tied at two. I guess we were right when we said in the pregame that this might be the C.J. and Glass show. As I mentioned, the Tigers out in the man-to-man. -man. The matchup there, you see Chris Jackson going against Matthews. They work it into Glass, guarded by Blanton. And he's got another one. Ole Miss off to a 4-2 lead. That's a bigger man. Jumper to Glass. Again, puts the ball on the floor. <laughs> Gerald Glass taking control early. Be interesting to see how long LSU will stay with the man to man in this situation because certainly Gerald Glass is taking it to Ricky Blanton early on. Glass with six of Ole Miss's first eight, but Jackson answers with a three. It's a shot we've seen about uh, 50, 60. We look for some people to help out Ricky Blanton on this assignment. He does have the one on one matchup man to man, but some of the principles, uh, a help defense, so to speak. Glass, as you see, a good shooter from the field and the line. He's got seven points. Dale Brown saying he's going to stay with a man-to-man -man for most of the evening. That'll be interesting to see if he actually does that. Second shot by Glass, also good. It's a four-point lead for Ole Miss, 12 to 8. 16 and a half minutes to go in the first half. Jackson again on the move, three. Chris Jackson with a couple of three-point field goals. Glass gets away from Blanton, back door and stuck. No help for Ricky that time, and he needed it. He got beaten badly, and Glass walked into the jam. Jackson, not hesitant to put it up, and hits another three. Jackson, now a correction, that was a two-pointer. Looks entertaining to watch, but it's a one-man show so far. He scored 31 in game one. They lost by 30. Tonight, he might score 30 again. Right now, they're uh, holding very close, doing very well, but we'll have to see what unfolds here. Certainly everything we expected so far in terms of the scoring battle. Saw it go through his hands, did save it. 
But Gerald Glass is the man he saved it to. The Rebels come the other way. Steve Glass really didn't have the numbers on that break. It was a one on three, and yet he still took it to the hole and got the shot to fall. 14 for Glass. 14 of Ole Miss's 18. They lead by one. Here's Jackson, a two-pointer. Free spray. CJ freezes the defense. Already we're coming up on that record. Chris Jackson needing 15. He's got 12 right now. Glass tries to operate, pulls up for the jumper, and connects again. The other guys have to be wondering what the, when they're going to get in the worst of it. Tigers have number 41, Rich Projeski, on the floor. Now this is Glass moving against Tracy. Gets the roll. Glass, a one-man wrecking crew at this point for Ole Miss. Well, you don't want that. You don't want Glass going one-on-one -on -one with uh, Dennis Tracy. 18 for Gerald Glass. This is Jackson the other way. Three-pointer. Where does that put CJ? He's getting close. Chris Jackson is now the all-time best scorer as a freshman in NCAA history. He passes up fly. Jumper draws Mouton. Pass down low. Again, it's Glass. Turns on Singleton. fouled right there. Two on two break. Glass in the lane. I'd say you have to be disappointed with 6 6'11 and playing that far away from the basket, but it opens it up for Glass. Well, Steve, that's what I was saying. I can't imagine Dennis Tracy trying to... Six and a half minutes left first half. Old Miss tries to add to a four-point lead. <laughs> Gerald Glass with 26 points. Another basket, and he'll top his average in the first half alone. He has two-thirds of Ole Miss offense. Jackson double-teamed and still nailed it. Wow, that's wonderful. He almost lost the dribble. Reads it into men out of bounds. Blanton on Turner. This is Singleton trying to hold Glass. Move in the lane. The shot. 28 points for Gerald Glass. Now we know how teams feel when they have to face C.J. Unstoppable. His average is 27.4. He's got 28. This is Jackson. The give and go. Beautiful pass from Mouton on the two. Chris points the finger. Ball out of bounds belongs to the Tiger. CJ's going to come down. He's going to give the ball to Lyle. And Lyle real nicely. Right back to him. CJ does the rest with the reverse layup. The idea of what Chris Jackson can do for an offense. We've got a timeout. Singleton tried to jump out, and Glass burned him. 30 points for Gerald Glass in the first half. When LSU dominated the Glass, but here, there's Gerald Glass Speaking dominating glass. the Glass. That's kind of appropriate, isn't it? Chris Jackson in the first half, of course, as we mentioned, has set the record yeah. now. The highest scoring freshman in the history of college basketball. And this is one of the nicest plays when he and Lyle mixed it up. CJ goes in. Fly Williams out of Austin Key. 854 points. CJ breaking that. And we said it wouldn't take him long. And it didn't. 19 so far. He had 19. He would, as we figured on the uh, plane coming up, he would take 60 in the last game to uh, get his average up to 30 a game. But he's definitely going to end up uh, on top in the SEC. It appears. Yeah. Twice his average. And there's the man. They say, uh, what did Dale Brown tell us this week? One of the top three off-guard picks in the NBA when he finally gets out of school. It would be Todd Lichty would be number one. And George McLeod would be number two. And then the third guy, according to Dale Brown and NBA scouts, would be Gerald Glass, number four from Ole Miss. And I see why. Kind of a Mark Aguirre type of a player. And a guy that, just a matter of time, Chris Jackson will be in the uh, National Basketball Association. We talked about the top guns at the beginning. You see Gerald Glass has already surpassed his average. Average is 27 and a half. He has 30 tonight. Chris Jackson in defense of CJ with 29 uh, points per game average and uh, 19 here in the first half. I mean, I'm, I shouldn't apologize for a guy that has 19 points, but he's had to hit a lot of his shots against uh, double teams. Right, and I think that's the, the biggest problem, that he is being double teamed because some of the other guys aren't taking the load. Ole Miss fans wanted a foul. None called, and here's Jackson. Makes it look so easy. That happens when Sean Murphy hits one from uh, further than two feet out. 
6'11", sophomore connects. Here's CJ the other way and count it. The officials were quite sure on that one. Blanton, though, got it officially, his third of the game. Glass is now five for five from the line, 31 points. Make it six for six. Three-pointer of the season. He's now one out of six. Ole Miss with a 10-point lead. Jackson counters with a three. That's more expected. It's a bad omen when Sean Murphy starts nailing three-pointers. Jackson now has 26. Glass, of course, 32, and he's got another shot. Make it 34. Once again, Rennell Singleton comes out to try and steal. Blanton saved it in. Nice Sims hustle. It to Jackson. The shot for two. Got it. Jackson with 28 points. As you line up. He gets the basketball now. Kicks it in the corner to Jackson for three. 31 for Jackson. Most of the Rebels pre-conference schedule in return to time. This is Glass. Got away from Mouton on that. Gets the dunk. 36 points for Gerald Glass. Guys who do that wind up making lots of money in the NBA. Tigers down by 11. It's CJ again. A whistle. And he's getting fouled now virtually every time he penetrates. This is what we're talking about right here. This is Major League. Wayne Sims says, I got to get out of the way of this. Glass goes to the line. Six of six tonight. 36 points. The tennis tonight, 8,580. So a virtual sellout here. Sounds like it. See Matthews back into the lineup for the Rebels. Last with his first miss at the line. Sims with another rebound. Nine-point game, 81-72, and another foul. Jackson showing a little bit of emotion there as he's hacked on the arm. Two shots coming up for Chris Jackson. He has 31 in the game. No question about this one. Matthews is just going to about grab his wrist. <laughs> CJ looks like he's doing a little water ballet in midair there. Matthews just back into the lineup, picks up his third foul. Jackson, top free throw shooter in the conference. It's the first one. See, if LSU is getting it back together on the boards in the second half. With a two-pointer here. Jackson looks inside. Ill-advised pass there. Glass came away with it. Steve, I closed my eyes. What happened? Nothing good. And there's the timeout. Darryl Glass has 39, and this place is going crazy. As the Rebels have moved back in front by 10, 84-74. After these words from our corporate sponsor. Heads to the glass. And that is NBA material. Glass now has 39. Else. Almost too strong, but Ricky saves it. Finds Jackson open from the top of the key, and he nails it. Screening against the Tigers man-to-man. -man. Trying to shake somebody free. This is Glass with the spin move. Nothing you can do about that. Call by the official there. Jackson for three. Now it's getting fun. It's no fun having to guard Glass one-on-one. -on -one. Glass back at the line, 41 points in the game. He's 7 of 8 from the strike. Make it 8 of 9. Be interesting to see these free throws. As I mentioned at the outset, LSU the best team in the conference. Old Miss at about 70%. Steve, now that the game is close, if they can keep fun to watch this entire season, and I'm sure the Old Miss fans feel the same way about this guy, Gerald Glass back to the line. That's 10 out of 11 for Glass. Ole Miss lead is back to five.
Time's starting to become a factor oh, now. Oh, boy. Down near four minutes, and Glass with two more inside. Just, just. Blowing uncontested layup, but not to take anything away from Lyle, he's played very well tonight, except for that throw. Jackson at the line, 38 points tonight. A rare miss for Jackson. 83% on the season. As you see there, that was his first miss. He's now two of three. Steven, if I'm not mistaken, he's played the entire ball game. A lot of it in the second half in a full court man-to-man -man press. He might be a little bit tired. This entire Tiger team may be tired as a season. They've played basically seven players during the year. Not an excuse. Jackson looking for 40. Got it. Seven-point game now. See the time, 1.34 to go. Play is stopped as Jackson connects on the second shot. A six-point lead. Rebels over the Tigers. Now just a minute and a half left. This is Jackson. Puts up the quick three and gets it. Unbelievable. You're right. Unbelievable is right. Jackson with another bucket. With just 30 seconds to go. CJ Jackson. Quick. A three. Got it. No question. And there is LSU's final timeout. 25 seconds to go. Dale Brown. And his Door is still open for the Tigers. 21 seconds. Jackson. Got it. And the foul. We may see it again. We may see the four-point play again in the closing seconds of a game. Feast your eyes on the freshman. Everybody in the building knew what he would do. He did it anyway. He'll hang here. He'll hang just long enough to get the foul. And he knocks it down. Steve, in your lifetime, have you ever seen a greater player? Chris Jackson with 50 points. Once in their lifetime. That man right there. Chris Jackson. Look at the concentration. He knows... It'll come down to his free throw, 17 seconds. And then I would think that Ole Miss will bring it up, possibly call a timeout, but certainly they'll go for the last shot to win it. Again, Chris Jackson, 50 points. Half the people in this arena are standing, and the other half will probably be standing when the ball's put in play. Expect a lot of noise coming up as Chris Jackson walks to the line. He's only three points shy of his record, 53. Certainly if it goes into OT, he should surpass that. But he's got to make this one first. And he's missed a free throw tonight. Some confusion on the floor now. Tigers want to get Rich Jeske into the game. Her Jeske, I should say. Now we're squared away. Jackson at the line to tie it. 17 seconds. No pressure whatsoever, huh? Tied at 106. This is uncontested when you get to the free throw line. Glass, 47 points in the game. He missed it. It worked beautifully, didn't it? Inside of 10 seconds. Seven. Jackson with the spin. Puts it up for three. Sims. Will go to overtime. The tie. Back to action, 3.14 to go. Jackson with the move, the jump, two, the two. Jumper does. Glass with the follow. One point game, minute and a half to go. It is career high if he can connect. He said he had to score 60 to finish the year with a 30 point average. He is not far from doing it. Make it 54, the new freshman record.
So he's got two freshman records tonight. Season scoring and now individual game with 54. And LSU back to a three-point lead. 112 to 109. A minute. Glass back to Midlick. Inside, Turner. Kicks it out to Glass. Three-pointer. Well, I thought he was tired, but he really showed me something there. He's over 50. What a show. Glass is at the line for two shots. Yeah, when you score that many, it's, it's, it's tough to keep count sometimes. <laughs> so Jackson has tied his record, but now... It's all down to glass. <laughs> Ole Miss leads. 113, 112, nine seconds to go. I just want to watch what happens after the free throw. The door is open for LSU. Jackson with the ball. Let's it go. LSU Tigers under Dale Brown in the tournament house in College Park, Maryland. Lenny Wirtz, Sid Rotenheffer, and Mark DiStaiola are the officials, and we're underway. And the rebound comes down for LSU. LSU very successful that time with the zone. Here's Jack Clever as dribble as I've ever seen. Prince Stewart, the sophomore out of Lexington, Kentucky. Ricky Blanton answers with a two. So rebound comes down in the hands of Wayne Sims. Now Chris Jackson. That's for two. And he got by LSU's offense is really to put kind of four guys down on the baseline. And that leaves Jackson all kinds of room to maneuver one-on-one -on -one against his player, so his defender. So lots of problems for Stewart to defend him. And they're gonna try Hardaway. That is his range. He can drift. And now a chance for LSU to regain the lead. Wayne Sims gives LSU a one-point edge. He is a very Jackson. Dennis Tracy is a walk-on. From the corner, three points. Take it out of bounds, step in. There's Hardaway, the junior out of Chicago. The call hits for two. Boy, great skip pass. Last four minutes. Well, that was size against no size. Foster, the big guy, at seven feet. No match down there by any. Jackson ends his own personal battle with the Jackson missed times. Here comes the... UTEP team in transition. Oh. Melvin. And simply, what a rejection by Foster. And here come the Miners, Hardaway, left-handed scoop shot. Rebound. This is Francis Azenwa. And again, Hardaway pushes it up. Nice dish to Stewart. Mouton, Jackson. We got some starts in the early part of the season when uh, they were searching for maybe one of the big guys who were really going to help them, but ended up with a rebounding problem. You know, for all of Tim Hardaway's skills, watch the unusual rotation he puts on the ball. There is no spin on his shot. Now, he releases it the same way all the time. Now, this is very interesting because most people think that you've got to spin the ball. That's the real proper way to do it. But if a ball player develops to be a good shooter and he got a mechanical quirk, don't worry about it. Don't disturb that category. And in the backcourt, Jackson, 4 of 13. Tim Hardaway, the junior out of Chicago, 4 of 12. But he does have a with it. And LSU can cut the lead to single digits. Chris Jackson, nice move over Stewart. And he hits one. Boy, there was the 2.33. Jackson was two of his first 11. And now he's got it on target. Yep, and a little bump by Stewart, but Jackson has great leaping ability so that he plays a little bit bigger than 6'2. 
after falling behind by 19 in the 315 mark of the first half. Decides to pass. Nice play by Johnny Melvin. Here's Hardaway for two. And that's the first basket for UTEP in this USAR. Tim Hardaway goes to the line. I say one thing. That might just be what the LSU team needs. A little emotion. They're playing very, very subdued. They have not really been active at all. And maybe it's a little gimmick going on right here by Dale Brown to steam up his players and pump a little emotion into them. I wonder if you'll like four straight points and no possession of the ball. Here comes Hardaway again. This is the second technical. Did you ever get two called on you that quickly? Yes. Quicker than Dale. Did you get the third? I actually got a technical call on me for staring. That'll never happen to Dale Brown. Four in a row on the double T on Dale Brown. Well, they were down in. Yeah, the Hardaway. Nice pick and roll underneath. Oh, boy, did that look good. And Sims was measuring Antonio Davis from behind, and Hardaway just put it in a perfect spot. A little pick and roll. He heads to the hoop, and Hardaway looking, and he sees Sims behind Antonio Davis, but perfect place for the pass. Blanton has to go. Stolen back by Vernell Singleton and Chris Jackson. This is right. Singleton, nice move. Jackson ends up with the ball. A little move gives it to Singleton, and he can challenge anybody. I don't care if he's only 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, he's going up there with all the big guys. At the conclusion, a little between the legs. Jackson did it to him. He did it to Jackson. Jackson, three-pointer. Very active, quick forward. LSU trailed by 13 at the half. Foster doesn't want the shot. <laughs> oh, oh, why not? He not easy. Does have 15, but he hit two of his first 11 shots. Hardaway with a steal. The lead is 15. Could grow after the alley -oop. I think back to that double technical, if that was Dale's intention, it didn't work. Well, the harder that LSU is playing right now, UTEP is matching them with intensity. Hardaway and Stood really playing some great defense. There's another steal. Here's Tracy. Jackson on the right. Oh, nice touch. Over the 6'9", Antonio Davis. 21 from the field. The lead is 13. Three-pointer, Hardaway. He's got 23 above his season average of 21. The answer from Jackson. Oh, I'll tell you, that was that little glide and the quick pull up. He just took his tie off before the ball game like he normally does, that clip-on tie. And he's just sitting back watching this thing. A lot of enjoyment. Could win the championship with. And it sure looks that way as the lowest seeded teams are doing their job. Footer. Should be eligible next year. They start one freshman, two sophomore, or two freshmen, two sophomores. And two There's Hardaway with some magic. Nice dive for the loose ball by Blanton, and Jackson picks it up. Off the pick. Nice soft shot. That's for two. You said he reminded you of somebody, but not a basketball player. He reminded me the first time I ever saw this kid play of Gordie Howe when I saw Gordie Howe for the first time. The great Detroit Red Wing uh, left winger, I guess he was, where he glide would glide up the but the ice and his ice skates are carrying the puck and it looked like it was so easily done until you looked at the guy that was trying to check him who was scurrying as hard as he could and still couldn't keep up. That's what Jackson reminds me of. 
LSU went on a run, which ultimately cut that lead to seven with 6.40 to go in the ball game. And there's Hardaway with two more and a chance for a three-pointer. I'll tell you, that was one of the real dynamic shots of Tim Hardaway. Uh, he doesn't worry about people on the inside. You see him come free on the baseline. Now he's got a short defender on him, mishandles the ball a little bit, and still can get it over the top. He has great eyes to see if a defender's coming at him and really can change the arc of the shot. Hardaway with 27 points. His season high was 32 against Colorado State. And in the just completed tournament, Western Athletic Conference, he scored 69 points. Jackson, it's in and out. Oh, look at that Stewart get on the front end of the break. Oh. That is a jet. Lead is 18. Largest lead of the night was 19. Chris Jackson gets two more. I have just seen some supremacy. Many in the, in the WAC thought there should have been three. They thought New Mexico should have been in. Now Dennis Tracy and Tim Hardaway get into it. That all started, Tommy, on a foul called over here right in front of us when they exchanged words. Well, you certainly don't want to get in a fist fight with the new rules they put in place. And he kind of bumps into him and a little push, and Hardaway just getting him to turn around and face him. And he's the uh, dive on the floor type, get down low and work hard on defense, but really haven't been able to do the job against Hardaway today because, this evening because Hardaway's got too much quickness for him. Hardaway with 29 points. Dale Brown's team, final four participants twice in the 80s. This is a team, though, that many picked for as low as eight in the SEC of the night. I'll tell you, Tim Hardaway is an exceptionally fine defensive guard, too. He doesn't get all the top assignments because he's so important to their offense. But I would say that Jimmy Hardaway could just about play anybody. Prince Stewart, who's had a big night. Jackson reaches around, gets the steal. Lyle Mouton. Jackson rejected by Mark McCall. Jackson gets it back at Kansas. Concentration. Came in and uh, didn't start, of course, because of the injury, but really made his presence felt on the board, uh, particularly the defensive board. But And they slipped the ball to him on the inside. Now, he could outleap anybody that uh, LSU had on the inside, and he really did what, what you're supposed to do. Go over the top. All right, Jim, 55 seconds to go. Chris Jackson, who missed two of his, or hit only two of his first 11 shots, has connected on 13 of his last 20. So he winds up right about his season average. He's got 31 points for the night. And in the process, becomes the all-time leading scorer for freshmen in NCAA history. He also, of course, is the first freshman since Wayman Fisdale of Oklahoma to be named as an All-American first-teamer. He's named three first teams so far. Well, I would say that he has got a great, bright future. Red Alback thinks that if he came out this year, he would be the first guy picked in the draft, at least by the Boston Celtics. If they were to have the first pick in the draft, that's how highly he thinks of it. But uh, Jackson is really going to even continue to grow. He's a very, very intelligent player and understanding what the possibilities are. And he uses this great athletic ability he has to outquick somebody, but it, it's taken hours and hours and hours to get that dribbling to the point where he uses it so effectively. You know, that makes all those programs feel that they, they've got some place to go in the next several years. You know, for a school like Siena to, to get past the first round, that's awfully important for their whole program. Chris Jackson hits for 33, but Tim Hardaway leads UTEP with 31. 